powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, this is Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Jeff Mosher is uh, off today. Adam Kaplan flipping spots. Jeff will be in on Friday. Adam is back today. The Inside the Birds podcast is back today. Dropped at 6 a.m. In this hour, the show is brought to you by Prop Swap, America's sports betting marketplace. Sell your sports bets. Take your profit. Find out how at PropSwap.com or download the Prop Swap app today. Back with us here to take a look at the Eagles at 12 and everything NFL on Football at 4. It's Mr. Adam Kaplan from the Inside the Birds podcast. Adam, welcome back, man. How are you, my friend? Yeah, and by the way, uh, ESPN just reported that uh, Sam Darnold is, is being swapped. Uh, uh, let's see. It's um, wow. Darnold is going to the Panthers, okay? Whoa, okay. For a conditional, for a six-round pick, along with second and fourth round pick in 2022. So, yeah, yeah. So, 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 what ha- so, so what we have here, Mike, is a situation where Sam Darnold will compete with um, Sam Darnold is going to compete with Teddy Bridgewater for the starting job, uh, the starting quarterback job with the Panthers. So that's where that's it. That's and, very and the, interesting. Like, the, and then the Jets. Go ahead. Are you surprised that they would, they brought Bridgewater there. I was a little surprised to hear that they wanted to like tra- trade up to draft a guy. I thought Bridgewater played pretty well last year, considering they didn't have McCaffrey all season. And- uh, yeah, he actually is very average, and they wanted they wanted someone to compete against him. Okay, and that's what Sam Darnold's going to do now. Here, here's the issue, Mike. He's got a fifth year option due after the draft, so the Panthers will have to pick that up, um, and that's valued at eighteen point eight million. So that's a that's something you know, something they're going to have to swallow. But uh, the fact of the matter is, Sam Darnold right now they really think he could be their future quarterback, and I, it doesn't preclude them from drafting a quarterback. They're just less likely to do it yeah. uh, with a pick, I think, is which is number eight. Yeah, and I guess that kind of affects the Eagles a little bit because that's a team at number eight that you thought may really be in play for quarterback, and maybe that lessens them to take a quarterback. If you were in that mindset, Adam, that, hey, there might be four quarterbacks taken before number 12, you know, that means that there's a good amount of players that fall backwards to you because all these players, uh, teams start to take a quarterback. So I – I guess you could say they still could take a quarterback, but it would really seem to be a surprise if they take one at number eight, having just traded for Sam Darnold. No, right, right. And that that to me, um, that to me, actually, I'm going to text someone the the Panthers as we speak here. I'm just very curious about how they feel about it. I actually had a call um, from a Panthers player today. I didn't answer that call. I probably should have done that. Yeah. So I'm very interested to see what happens here. This is, um, this is interesting to me to see what they're going to do here for well, sure. Let's talk quarterbacks here and kind of three weeks out because if you re kind of set the quarterback draft board now, knowing what we know with this Sam Darnold trade, how do the executive, uh, the, the, the personnel people around the league kind of rank this group of guys three weeks ahead of the NFL draft? Oh, wait, which position? I'm sorry, which position are you talking about? Looking at the quarterbacks. Yeah. All right. So, and this is interesting that this trade just went down. I, the Panthers clearly, first of all, you know, they've been trying to get to Sean Watson. They're out of the Sean Roth Watson uh, acquisition race. That was not going to happen. Uh, they were the strongest on him and that takes him out of it. Now, when you look at the quarterbacks, we know, we, we know who the top two guys are. Zach Wilson uh, is going to go number two. Now, now that Darnold has moved, uh, we know that Zach Wilson, the the, uh, the quarterback from BYU, is going to go at number two. The question is, who's going to go number three, four, and five at the quarterback position? So it's Lawrence and Wilson now. Is it going to be Justin Fields, Mac Jones, or Trey Lance? Justin Fields is a guy right now that if you looked at Jones and Lance, Fields is the better of the three in terms of upside potential, athleticism, arm strength. Matt Jones is the accurate guy who's more ready to play probably right away. So it, to me, I think when you look at it with Justin Fields, he's the guy who's most, when you look at upside and athleticism and arm strength and every size and everything, he's got the total package of the guys from three to five. It's Lawrence, it's Wilson, then Fields. 
I believe Mac Jones goes before Trey Lance. Trey Lance is more of a project for down the line. Where, the, in fact, one uh, personal man said he thinks it's a redshirt year for him. He's got to learn. Uh, he just has a lot of challenges. Just remember, he, he only played one game this past season. Uh, he's got some things to clean up with his mechanics, but he's a really good kid. Uh, pretty smart. It's just it's going to take time to, to build him. Uh, but I think of those three, I think Fields is the guy. It's so hard, Adam, too, because this world that we live in, you draft a guy that high, everybody wants him to play right away. It's really hard to swallow drafting a guy that high and then sitting him. And the, 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 the Jets just kind of ran into this. They didn't want to draft a quarterback at number two and have him sit there behind Sam Darnold for a year. They wanted to get that asset right on the field as fast as they could. So, you know, it's really hard for these teams – to take a player that high. So the question I have is, are all these players going to be quote-unquote taken that high? In other words, are they going to be in the top 15 where these – Oh, are- yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so here's – okay. Let, let me give you the um, – Mike, let me give you sort of like the area I see yeah. where these quarterbacks are going to go. The earliest fields would go would be obvious to number three with the 49ers. I want to get into that pick as we speak right now. If you just look from the West Coast offense, who's the best fit of those three of the, uh, that we mentioned before? That would be Mac Jones. He's a West Coast offensive quarterback. What, what do I mean? Short area, get it out of your hands. Um, throw it forward, go get it. That is the type of offense that Kyle Shanahan runs. He's their, not only the head coach and, and play caller, he has personnel control. He would fit really well, but you're, you're just, what you're doing is he's not a great athlete. And you're ignoring the fact that he doesn't have a very good arm. Some teams I know for a fact have an early second round grade on him. But again, it's what you're willing to accept with Mac Jones. We talked about fields. Um, I think the earliest he goes would be number three. The latest he would go would be 15 to the, to the Patriots. Mac Jones, now that he's not going to, he was not, the, the Panthers, I understand, were, were not interested in him. But if, okay, if, Mac Jones does not go to number three. He may drop a little bit. Okay, he may drop a little bit. Um, I also would put him, I don't think he would get past uh, Belichick at 15 in the Patriots. Uh, the, the Patriots are in a position now, Mike, that they've got to get a quarterback. They, they, they have to get a developmental quarterback sooner rather than later. We know that Cam Newton is on the roster. Um, Jarrett Stidham is not going to be the guy. We know that. Uh, they had an opportunity to play him late last season. They declined to do it. They let Cam finish out the season. So I think when you look at it, and and you're the Patriots. This is a, this is the time that for you to go get a quarterback. There should one of those guys should be there. He could trade up uh, to do that. Um, and then look, Lance. I think still goes in the first round. He's going to go somewhere between 15 and 26 or 27 that area. I, I, again, I think he goes probably the earliest is 15. But as we've learned in this draft, when Team Tebow went in the first round, I was shocked. Um, things happen, and yeah. you mentioned it, the quarterback position. We don't have access to what everybody's thinking. Things happen crazy at the quarterback position. Mark Sanchez is a top 10 pick. He got to two a- AFC championship games. We would all argue. We we know what happened there. Great defense, great running bait, did, great running game with the Jets. Didn't ask them to throw the ball out, but you know what? They won with him. It's a quarterback position. Guys get overdrafted all the time. They do, and and I, I wonder, like the Eagles sitting at twelve, are they a prime team to take calls from teams behind them? Because there's not. I mean, you have the Patriots at fifteen. That would seem to be one. How many teams behind Philadelphia is interested in moving up to get into that spot? So I'm wondering, this Darnold trade has really spent some dominoes here to say, hey, are teams going to say, hey, I got to get into the twelve range because now that. Carolina might not take a guy. There might be a second quarterback kind of working their way back towards me, and I got to jump the Patriots. I find like this this whole little deal has just added another layer of intrigue to being at the number 12 spot. Yeah, look, because right now, right, let, let's look at the quarterback position. After the Niners, Atlanta could take one. I mean, they are a really bad football team. They, they need a they need to rebuild their roster. There yeah, a lot of dead money. So of a lot of dead money in uh, Matt yeah. Ryan the next two years. Yeah, well, they're not cut him. No, but you, you, let me finish. Yep, they're not drafting a quarterback to play this season. Matt Ryan is the quarterback. We know that. They need a to- they need a rebuild. They're worse off than the Eagles. It's close, but they're worse off than the Eagles. But at some point, they have to figure out who the future quarterback is. But you're right. They're they're not trading them the contract. I mean, they 
it's just the dead money. It, it, it depends on your philosophy of dead money. We know the Eagles don't seem to care about dead money, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> um, other teams that could take a quarterback. In the, in, in Carolina's out for a quarterback. Denver at number nine. I, I, absolutely in play for a quarterback. Okay? Um, they could do that. Um, Dallas obviously is not going to do that. The Giants are not going to do that. The Eagles are not going to do that at number 12. So to your point, maybe there's some teams that would trade up. Um, if these guys drop, that would ha- see what I was telling Jeff on our show this morning is, boy, if you're an Eagles fan, you really want those four quarterbacks to be drafted, four quarterbacks to go off the board through a number 11. Then you're really looking that you're going to be able to get one of those top corners or top receivers. Now the Carolina is most likely out of the quarterback race at eight. I don't know. Very interesting stuff. Sam Darnold traded. It's a six round pick this year, a second next year and a fourth next year so a second and a fourth next year and a six rounder this year sam darnold traded to carolina who now have teddy bridgewater and sam darnold on that roster so uh, i guess that they could get calls on bridgewater maybe they've tried mike they've made him available nobody really wants him wow. um he's got a not that you would cut him if you're trading him but he's got 10 million of a 17 million fully guaranteed okay. he did he was very average yeah um they tried to move him no one's wanted him um, right now, Teddy's on the roster and he'll compete against Darnold. But here's what I would also tell you about the Panthers. It does not preclude them from drafting a quarterback later as early as the second round. But I, I just don't see it at eight because Darnold, to me, he's got a former first round pick. He's got ability. It just, it, he didn't play well last season. I, I get it. it. It's a fact. That's what personnel people and coaches tell me who graded his tape from last season. But the Panthers are in a position where they wanted to potentially upgrade the quarterback position. Darnold could be that guy. And you know what? Joe Brady, their OC, runs a pretty good offense, quarterback friendly. All right. Uh, By the way, not to put you on the spot or anything here, but after the group of first-round quarterbacks, what does that next group of quarterbacks kind of look like? Because you would think Philly would be in play for a developmental backup here. We talked a little bit about that Friday, but what does that next group of guys look like? Yeah, and, and it wouldn't be, to me, for the Eagles. We actually talk about this on tomorrow's show. We'll give you a little hint. We... Our next show on, on in, the Inside the Birds platform is the Inside the Draft with Greg Cosell. And we actually, Greg breaks down those 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 quarterbacks uh, around three to five. It's it's really funny you brought that up because that was really something that Jeff and I wanted to make sure. And I'll give you one hint. Listen to what he has to say about, about Kellen Mond, who I know a lot of coaches around the National Football League like. That's the area where Mond might go off the board. Ellinger, a little bit later. Um, there's some good mid-rounders, which we're going to talk about on tomorrow's show and future shows. But um, now, here's the question, Mike. The Eagles right now have 11 draft picks. It doesn't mean they're going to have 11 by the time the draft starts or even uh, midway through the draft. They might wind up having nine. So that might throw a wrench into them drafting a quarterback. Uh, I'm sure they like to have one. They need a third quarterback. You can't go to training camp with there's two. That doesn't happen. Yep. So they'll add one. I do believe, like most people, and I think you're you're saying that, and we agree with you, that's going to be probably a, a, a quarterback from rounds three to five. Uh, by the way, Kyle Trask played at Florida. Brian Johnson, his coach, is now the Eagles quarterback coach. Maybe yeah. a mid-round uh, selection there. Just keep that in mind. Yep. Real quick, yep. before we, I want to look at the wide receivers too, but Joe Flacco, I was off when that happened, and I didn't hear what you had to say about that. But, like, I have heard that, that Flacco is not the easiest, like, not the most willing mentor type of guy. Like, him as a backup, do you think that – you know, fit is a good kind of synergy fit for behind Jalen Hurts? Yeah, you look, he, Joe is not looking to retire. He not, I mean, I don't know that he'll ever be a starting quarterback again, but the way the coaches around the National Football League told me about him after they graded his tape uh, for free agency, if you're bringing him in, you know he's not going to be your starting quarterback. You want someone who's done it before, he's been there and done that. I understand he's not the quarterback he once was. I wouldn't argue that. Yeah. One of his four games is good. The, the New England game was fantastic, just based on tape study. The others were shaky. But remember, he had, no, he, was, he had no training camp because he was not cleared to practice until September. So he didn't, he didn't really have those guys uh, you, to work with. So that, that hurt him. But he's going to be good for the quarterback room. He's a guy who's, again, been there, done that, Super Bowl MVP. He's going he's gonna to be challenging in practice because – Joe Flacco is a lot of things. One thing is, is a big time NFL arm. He's going to, he's going to improve the competition of practice. We know that if we get through the, the draft, 
and Jalen Hurts is still the starter, he's going to be the starter of the season. It's just a matter of do they make any trades or anything like that. Uh, I would take Deshaun Watson off the board, though. That, that, that ain't happening. All right. Uh, um, based on what we know now. But, again, Flacco is good for what they want him to do. He's absolutely perfect. This is what, what coaches think in particular of the National Football League. They've all mentioned the same thing. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna challenge you in training camp. That's what they want for the young quarterback. All right, uh, a look at the quarterback position after the trade today and the draft coming up. The Eagles at 12. Let's take a look at uh, how the top wide receivers are viewed by NFL teams. You've really got uh, Chase, yeah. Waddle, Smith. Everybody knows about those three, but is there also a fourth guy, and who is that fourth guy? Yeah, so Chase, I have him going off the board from picks five to seven. No one that I've talked to, I've t- I always take, talk to a lot of receiver coaches. They don't care that he didn't play last season. They've done their background on character. It's pretty good. Uh, he is the most complete receiver for this draft. As, as one receiver coach told me, quote, does everything well, very well. Hard to find a true weakness, which is what you're looking for if you're going to spend a high first-round pick on him. Jalen Waddell is the second-best graded receiver for this draft. Should go off the boards anywhere from five to seven. Devontae Smith, who's built like Deshaun Jackson, but he's taller, unbelievably explosive. He's a playmaker. The issue that you have is he's six feet and only 170 pounds. Do you know if Deshaun Jackson as a rookie was 166 pounds? And Deshaun is about two, two and a half inches shorter. So he's going to have to put on weight. Some teams are concerned about that. And now the fourth guy to go off the board, it is absolutely debatable. If you bring up somebody else, I got no problem with it. But Rashad Bateman from University of Minnesota. Good size, run after the catch. He's not a burner. Uh, he, his, his 40 times 4-3, he doesn't play to that speed. He plays to the mid-4-4s, four four, but he's tough. He's smart, highly skilled, terrific route runner, late first, early second. If you're, if you're an Eagles, if you're from the Eagles and you don't get that receiver in the first round, you may be able to get him the second. He's going to go probably no further than the Eagles when they pick in the second round. It, it, he may go before that. Good football player, very underrated, and a favorite of a lot of receiver coaches. Yeah, he. Uh, by the way, Eagles have picked 37 in round two. They also have two third-round picks, so if he's fallen, they might be able to use that one of those. That would shock me, Boom. yeah. I, I don't see that. No. I, I, look, could he Could he go? He absolutely could be on the board for the Eagles in early in the second round. There's no question what, but I'm saying – He's a top 40 pick is kind of where I hear. Yep. Um, Bateman's my favorite of the next group of guys, by the way. All right. Uh, the other, oh, there you go. The other spot that uh, the Eagles would definitely be in play at 12 would be corner. So how are the top three corners viewed in this draft by teams? Oh, yeah. We, boy, uh, we break this down on today's show. But, again, it, it, it's debatable. Um, the guys I trust say it's Horn. It's Sertain Jr. It's really it's Sertain, Sertain II. It's funny that they're their sons of former NFL players. It's pretty cool. Now, Caleb Farley. I've got him going. I, I still think he goes in the first round. I may want to being wrong, but I just don't get the feeling that he's off everybody's board for the first round. Um, he's had two back procedures. The second one had nothing to do with the first one. What happened was he was, I think he was lifting weights and um, he had a either herniated disc or disc issue, which got correct, and it's it's not going to be a problem. But you have to remember, though, he had a knee injury. See, his story is unbelievable, Mike. High school college quarterback. I mean, high school quarterback. Was recruited to play receiver. Moved to corner at, um, after his redshirt freshman year because of the knee injury. Only played corner for two seasons. And he was unbelievable. So think about it. If he didn't have the back issue, it's not out of the question. He could have been the first corner taken. It's a pretty remarkable story. And a really good kid, from what I understand. So. Um, these are the top three corners. It's not close. It's just a matter of where teams ha- are on this medical situation. Yeah, the the thing, you know, Sidney Jones was supposed to be a first-round pick. He had the medical – not the same injury, by the way. He had a, a Achilles tear drop to round two. We know the Eagles scooped in and got oh, him yeah. in the second round. So yeah. those corners – Different story, Mike. We yep. talk about that. Just so you know, we talked exactly about what you just brought up, and it's completely different. That – it was just medical. Sidney Jones, I'll just give you a hint. Sidney Jones had an issue with – competition and uh the the coaches got down on him because he just got down on himself and i'm glad that he's revived his career with jacksonville it's a good story uh by the way uh the new inside the birds podcast dropped six o'clock inside the draft greg cosell q a with quentin michael jason avant that's also on the inside the birds platform the guys will have a new inside the birds podcast thursday morning 6 a.m 
And, of course, we have you here, football at four, each and every day, leading you to the draft all offseason long. And, of course, a lot of NFL news. Sam Darnold traded, as Adam kind of mentioned, right at the top of this conversation. So we'll continue on that and more. Adam, good pinch hitting today. Uh, I guess I'll see you for a while. I won't see you for a while now. By the way, this was purchased at the Mall of America in uh, Minnesota. How about that? Oh yes, yes, yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's actually a pretty. Good, is that a, yeah? That's a pretty cool top right there. There you go. Nice well, a Super Bowl was it? Collector's item, man. The the smallest radio row in captivity. That's right. Inside the uh, food court at the Mall of America. All right, Adam. I'll see you, man. Thank you. All right, Adam Kaplan. Like all guests appeared via the boardwalk Honda hotline. He and Jeff uh, doing a little flip flop. Jeff will be in on Friday show.